YouTubers, Mike Martins here with the Mike Martins channel. Lots of questions, uh, people calling, messaging, emailing me, even sending me messages on uh, Instagram and Facebook. People asking about uh, Canada's ban on assault rifles. Well, here you go, guys. Tomorrow night, which is Saturday night, Mike of the Night, gun grabs in Canada, automatic weapons. So we're going to get specific. And we should um, get together this Saturday. Uh, 9 p.m., uh, 8 p.m. Pacific time. So check your local time zone, and we'll probably have a few other guests call into the show uh, from different parts uh, of the world uh, talking about uh, somebody went for a COVID test. Hopefully we can get her on the uh, on the show to give us a, an update on what happened with that. But also, guys, don't forget to, to, to join Mike in the Night for that because I'm getting a lot of emails. I want to hear everyone's points of views, whether you live in New Zealand, Australia, America, Canada and the United Kingdom. Is this just a beginning? And there's a long road ahead when it, with, with losing rights, maybe freedoms, or maybe assault rifles are dangerous. And why should the average Joe Donuts own one? It's up to you guys to decide on Mike and the Night Collins. We're going to have full open lines on Saturday night. Don't forget to hear to set your reminder for Mike and the Night's guns. Uh, gun grabs in Canada. We'll be, we'll be very specific about it. So anyways, I want to do this Scotia Bank to close its metal business. Scotia, watch this guys, was for years the world's biggest lender to, uh, to the physical precious metals industry with a history that stretches to 1684. Holy crap. Now, what's happening guys? Well, Bank of Nova Scotia, you go in, they even have little flyers, buy the physical gold, they, they get it into the branch, you go and pick it up, you sign off on it, blah, blah, blah. And for me, on a government side point of view, that's phenomenal. Because they track all your purchases. Heck, maybe even five years down the road, the government could even tax you on that gold if it goes up in value. On a government point of view, that's like great that a, a, you know, a federally run bank is actually, well, I don't, it's independent. But you know what I mean when it comes to putting in measures and stuff. You guys know what I mean. Would go ahead and scrap that idea if it's making money. You know what I'm saying? Especially, why? Because people can't get their hands on gold anymore. Gold is becoming more and more scarce as they print more and more money. The price of gold is slightly going up, but it's not hedging as fast as it should with the amount of money being printed. We did a video the other day here uh, on the Zero Hedge video here. It's right here on my videos. Where is it? Right there. Gold to silver ratio. Going crazy, 112 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. That is absolutely phenomenal. I've never seen that ratio before. It's usually eight, 60 to 80 to 1. I've never seen that. Watch this video. It's actually not bad. And it's apparently 4,000 years. It's been, a, so it's the cheapest it's been in 4,000 years in, on recorded tablets. Yeah, watch that video. <laughs> Anyways, so guys, uh, here it is, guys. London. Uh, London gold price slips near 1700 as Scotia shuts shop. COVID sinks China demand. Moscow won't buy. It will be harder to get gold as Scotia winds down on bu uh, bullion desk. Okay, so here's the deal with this. A lot of people are wondering, well, Mike, you know, let me tell you something. Uh, well, no, it's hard to get. And, and there's a lot of notes, right? I'm not saying Scotia Bank's doing it, but I know Deutsche Bank. Uh, has been on record trying to having troubles to fulfill people's silver orders. So people would buy a certificate uh, from their bank stating they have this many ounces of gold and the gold will be ha held in reserve at the bank. And a lot of people would go with their gold certificates and try to cash in their gold because gold is nice and high. And banks have had meetings, right? I'm not, I'm not going to mention which banks, but they've actually had meetings where to dissuade the customer from taking the physical gold, and then second, send them off, uh, send them away, and tell them it's in the mail that they're going to be mailed out anywhere from six to twelve weeks uh, wait period. So the banks don't have it in their coffers to basically spit it out when people ask for their gold. And I don't know what's happening internally with Scotia Bank, and I don't want to pretend I do. I know what's happening, but it could be a case where. They're just having a really tough time getting it because I know they actually send it to the branch. I know they do. And you could go pick it up if you choose to. 
Uh, I don't think they offer you certificates with Scotiabank. I think they give you the physical. It even says on the flyers, buy some physical, a safekeeping haven. It even it even promotes that, like gold bugs and silver bugs do. You know what I'm saying? So this is a really interesting thing. So here it is. Gold prices uh, f uh, flirted again with $1,700 per ounce in London trade Wednesday, edging back to what was the new eight-year high when first reached a fortnight ago as world stock markets extended their rally from the COVID crisis crash. Ending above mid-April's rebound high, the MSCI World Index has now recovered half uh, recovered half of last month's 35% plunge. Major government bond prices also rose, uh, edging long-term interest rates back down to this month's new record lows uh, ahead of today's monetary policy decision from the U.S. Federal Reserve, also cutting the overnight dollar rate back to zero and increasing the asset purchases by more than $2.3 million to offset its impacts of economic shutdown. So anyways... Um, so here it is, guys. Back in the bullion market, routers uh, meantime reported that Canada's Scotia Bank is finally set to quit the physical metals business more than two years after it tried and failed uh, to find a buyer for its Scotia Makata division. So they were selling out the division. I just got a customer walk in that missed me. Hair, ah, air pump. Are you doing okay, buddy? Fuck you. Happy as fuck. We're getting everything. I've got your money for you. You got money for me? Yeah, man. Okay, hold on. Let me just finish this this video. Yeah, no, no worries, no worries. And I'll be at your service. Uh, hang out. Just look around. Yeah, touch no thing. Rough, touch man. everything. I missed right. your store. Right? I know you missed the store. All right. So there it is, guys. Already down to 15 staff from previous 100-person hand count, head count. Scotia's precious and industrial metal uh, team remain London market markets. Uh, with its account accounts and bullion dealers at the Bank of England continuing to enable its role of one of the city's five gold clearing banks through the LPMCL. Wow. So at least Scotia Bank's up front saying, hey, guess what? We're gonna have we're gonna have trouble getting in physical gold. I mean we've been selling it for what, six and sixteen eighty four? So maybe we're going to have to cut back because we just can't get it in, right? So if you go back to the video I did yesterday, which is really good, this one here. I did it this morning. I edited it this morning right here. Oh, uh, no, that's my negative. Bank's going negative rates. Uh, right here. You The graph opens up here. Let me see if I can find that graph. There it is. There's the global money supply, and there's gold. So gold should be like up here above the global money supply at all times, but it hasn't. And this one is silver to gold ratio, 112 to 1. Wow. Okay, guys, I got a friend waiting on me. Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. God bless. Thanks for watching, guys.